this evening in the mighty name of Yahshua. Those who labor in the ministry, brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the mighty and powerful name of our soon coming King. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And if I'm being honest with you tonight, at times we don't use what God has given us to the full capacity, meaning our lips, our mouth, our tongue, our service. Because when you last check, oh my God, you were able to go to the bathroom and to use it freely this evening. Uh, you were able to use it and not even think about it. Uh, there are people who are struggling to use the washroom, um, but God have allowed you to do it freely. Are you there with me, brothers and sisters? Yeah. From last I checked, you are able to breathe freely tonight without struggling you don't even have to think of breathing my god that is indeed a blessing don't you know that there are people at the hospital they need the oxygen to survive mighty god hallelujah but god have given this to us for free you are able to breathe you are able to speak you are able to use your hands. You are able to use your feet. You are able to do everything tonight. It's only because the love and the power of God Almighty that you and I are present here tonight, beloved brethren. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve tonight. And tonight, I want to embark upon a topic tonight. Loss for words. How many of us have felt that way? There are times that you are just lost for words. You cannot express it. It is so deep that there is no words that can express what your heart feels. Sometimes you just pour out in tears because what you feel inside, words cannot express it. Uh, if truth be told, there are no words that can design to express the, the, the way your heart feels at times. Uh, and, and the language you can speak at times is just to cry. Mm. How many of us feel that way sometimes? Loss for words. Tonight, beloved brethren, I'm embarking upon the book of Luke chapter 16. Now, it should be told, the book of Luke chapter 16, it is, uh, 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 and from verse 19, it is a, 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 a story in the Bible that is so much in depth that there are, are different views on it by scholars. But tonight, through the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm going to try to express it. Hallelujah. Through God, Holy Spirit, tonight. And I pray, God, that you learn from it tonight. I pray, God, that it inspires us tonight. Praise God as we bow in prayer. Father in heaven, great is your faithfulness tonight, O oh Lord. And worthy is your name to be praised. We will exalt your name at all times. And let your praises continually to be in our mouth. Father, tonight we pray. For the leading and directing of your spirit. And let your name be glorified. Let your name be honored. For into your hands we commit all things, O Lord. Speak down for me, O Father. That your people may understand. In Yahshua's holy name I pray. And I give you thanks. And I said, Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Now, as we go through the scripture, I'm going to go in a little bit of teaching and then we're going to go in a little bit of preaching. Is that all right with you tonight? Praise God. Now, last week we spoke about John chapter 11 by a man they call Lazarus. Now, as we said, the name Lazarus means God has helped. But tonight, as we go through the book of Luke chapter 16, and from verse 19, we are talking about Lazarus, 
but is not the same Lazarus as in John. But the name Lazarus remains the same. And the meaning of the name Lazarus remains the same. God has helped. Now, beloved brethren and friends and family of God and visitors tonight, as we look at Luke chapter 16 and verse 19, here this tonight, there was a certain rich man which was clothed with pearl and fine linen. Uh, if truth be told, this man was dressed elegantly. This man was dressed expensively. This man, it was a sight to look upon him because of the way he dressed. As we go to verse 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Now remember again, the name Lazarus means God has helped. But the scripture says that the man Lazarus, which was laid, where was he laid? This man was laid at the gate, full of sores. Let me just pause here for a cause. When someone is filled with sores, my God, I'm going to the medical side right now to help you understand the background. When someone is filled with sores, especially a beggar, what this really relates to me is that a beggar does not have health insurance. My God, my God, my God. Maybe I'm talking to someone tonight. You have a health insurance that even when you feel a pain, an ache, a toothache, whatever your condition is or your conditions are, you are able to go see the doctor because you have a health insurance. Oh my God. Uh, most of you are in the, in the United States. Uh, there was a health insurance they called Obamacare. But can I talk to you tonight? The scripture says, Lazarus, he was full of sores. Lazarus, he was poor. This man could not afford health insurance. This man could not afford doctors. So I could only imagine that because this man's body was full of sores, the sores was infected. Think, think about it. I, 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 I want to bring this story to life tonight. I'm saying that Lazarus, because he was filled with sores and he was not able to afford a doctor, he was not able to afford any medical. Oh, I'm understanding tonight that maybe Lazarus, the sores were infected. And because the sores were infected, I could only imagine what came out through the sores. Now, friends and family of God, if anybody has sores that are infected, and if they are infected so badly, it could bring you into something they call septic shock. Now, really, septic shock comes about as a result when the body has an infection that the immune system cannot handle it anymore. The individual will go into what you call septic shock. So I could only imagine maybe Lazarus having sores that were infected that it was so bad upon the man Lazarus. However, I go deeper with you tonight. The scripture says that in verse 21 that he was desiring to be fed with crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Wow. Lazarus was so poor that he was not desiring to eat bread from the rich man's table, but his desire was to eat the crumbs. Wow. Mighty God of Daniel, stand by us tonight. The man had a desire. He was looking forward to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. 
Tonight, may I turn it to you tonight. What are you desiring tonight? What are you desiring to eat tonight? Where are you desiring to eat from tonight? The man Lazarus was desiring to eat from the rich man's table and not just eat from the table he ate the crumbs he was desiring to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table i'm heading somewhere with you tonight underline the word crumbs remember when jesus met this woman and jesus says he's not meant to take the children's bread underline this and give it to dogs and she said hey lord listen to this i don't care you call me dogs i don't care the name you may call me but she says even the dogs eat the crumbs hello somebody that fall from the master's table this woman was willing to settle for the crumbs that fell from the master's table and tonight i'm seeing here lazarus he was desiring to feed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table tonight i ask the question what is your desire tonight walk here with me tonight the scripture says moreover moreover the dogs that came and licked he saws wow this man was so poor laying by the wayside mm -hmm. while all of us who are lying down on our queen size bed hello somebody on your king size bed but this poor man he was laying down on the ground i could imagine oh my god and the dogs licked his souls you see what the story is helping us understand tonight that this situation was so deep upon Lazarus. His condition was not the best of condition. But I realize something here that the man Lazarus, in spite of his condition, the man had a desire. Tonight, may I bring point number one. In spite of your condition tonight, everyone on this platform, you must have a desire. Jesus Jesus says to the disciples, I desire to eat with you, hallelujah, the Lord's Supper. I desire to eat it with you. I'm saying tonight, someone, you need to have a desire. What is your desire tonight? Is your desire for the things of the world tonight? Is your desire for the things of God tonight? Is your desire for riches tonight? Is your desire to enter into the kingdom of God? Someone tonight, you ought to have a desire. Maybe somebody tonight, you have a desire to be promoted on your job. You have a desire to get the best of this life. But I want to tell you tonight, every man desire, hallelujah, you must have that desire to serve God. Oh, as the man says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in God. You see, the man's job desire was to serve God. The poor desire was to serve God. Tonight, I ask the question, what? What is your desire? I'm heading somewhere with you tonight. I'm just getting started up. So the Bible says he desired to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Watch this now, verse 22. We're heading somewhere. And it came to pass, wow, that the beggar died. And he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now one may understand or ask the question, why Abraham's bosom? Because it was what they could have related to because they watched Abraham as their father. Hello, somebody. And so the Bible says that he was carried into Abraham's bosom and the rich man also died and was buried. Watch this now. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. 
Mm. And began in torment and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. I'm going to go into explanation, explanation in a bit. Verse 24. And he carried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus that I may dip, oh my God, that I may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. I'm going to explain this tonight. But Abraham said, Son, Remember thou in thy lifetime. Underline this word. Remember in thy lifetime thou receiveth thy good things and likewise Abraham evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all of this, between us, you there is a great goal fixed. So that they which pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. That we come from thence. Watch this now. Then he said, I pray thee, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. He sent to send the, 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 the poor man Lazarus to his father's house. To one fight brethren he have there. Mm. And Abraham said unto him in verse 29, They have Moses the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Our friends and family of God, I want to take my time here with you that you get to understand in here tonight. Here we go now. So there is Abraham's bosom. There is the rich man in hell. Now, in scripture, the word hell could represent the grave, which we call Hades. Now, back in Israel, ancient Israel, there was a place they called Guyana. Now, if you read Mark chapter 9, you will see the scripture use the terminology hell. It says where the worm dieth not and the fire quench not. So it was a place where they would have thrown the criminals in their life. And there would be fire in that place. That's why the scripture says it's better to go into life means with one hand than to burn in hell fire with both. Watch me tonight. So the word hell represents the grave. And, and the scripture used the terminology to help you understand that the body of Jesus did not remain in the grave. So where did the body of Jesus go? The body of Jesus went in the grave. Are you there with me tonight? So the word hell represents the grave of what we call Hades. But now that the, the terminology, when it used hellfire, it was referring to a place they called Guyana. It was a place where the criminals were thrown into that pit. My God, I'm heading somewhere with you tonight. We go deeper now. So for one to be in existence, you need a body and you need a spirit. For one to be in existence, you need a body and you need a spirit. Let me break it down. In creation, there was the man you call Adam. Help me, Holy Spirit, to break it down to the saints tonight. There was the man they call Adam. Realized before God breathed into Adam, which we call Ruach. The breath of life or the spirit, the body of Adam was thus. So watch this now. For Adam to have come into existence, God had to take dust and spirit. Oh my God. Hallelujah. 
for Adam to have come into existence, God had to take the dust and spirit. So God breathed into the dust. Hallelujah. And Adam became a living soul. So that is why now the book of Proverbs help us understand tonight uh, that when somebody dies, the spirit goes back to God. Ruach goes back to God. What did God give to Adam? God gave Adam the breath of life, which is the spirit. And, and, and watch this now. So when a man dies, the body, which is dust, it goes back to the ground. Um, and the spirit God gave to him, which is Ruach, the breath, it goes back to God so there is no existence of the individual let, let me break it down even more the man who lived a day before God was a man they called Methuselah Methuselah lived 969 years before God watch this now but the scripture says one day is as a thousand years before god so in other words no man have ever lived a day before god so if the man the rich man and lazarus they were still alive it would have mean that they have lived for more than a thousand years i'm getting somewhere with you tonight just walk here with me tonight so the scripture is helping us understand tonight that the rich man, to understand the context, the rich man, he was in his lifetime enjoying the life. In his lifetime, he was enjoying the riches. He was enjoying the pleasure of this life, but he did not regard God. The scripture is helping us understand Lazarus, when he lived, though he was poor but lazarus heart was with god i'll say that again though lazarus was poor but he was rich the rich man though he was rich he was poor i'm saying a man life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possess we believe our wealth in life is all about our cars our houses our jobs but i want to suggest to you tonight a man life does not consist in the abundance of anything he have but what 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 makes total sense to god is your soul let me break it down now so abraham they considered abraham as a father and now when the rich man died and the poor man died both of them were in a different location rest assured beloved brethren is not just about life now but there is a life in the future when jesus returns your 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 sentence or your judgment will be based on the way you live your life now uh, you see many of us we are not concerned about the future but we are concerned about now so you live your life anyhow you live your life not even thinking about god almighty but there is a day of judgment that is coming when all i shall see him hallelujah when he shall burst the clouds of glory him when jesus is coming back he's coming back to judge the world hallelujah and when he says welcome my son and my daughter into that glorious kingdom watch this now lazarus died and the rich man also died so when both of them died the scripture says the rich man looked afar off and saw lazarus in the bosom of abraham it was just a sign to show us that the soul of the poor man was in a better place than the soul of the man who enjoyed the wealth i'm coming somewhere with you now watch this now it goes deeper So the rich man is telling Abraham, give Lazarus a chance to go tell my brethren. 
that don't even make it to this place of torment. I have five brethren. Go tell them quickly. And Abraham said, now remember at that time, Abraham was already dead, beloved brethren. Abraham said, watch this now. If they have Moses, and they did not hear Moses, and the prophets, hello somebody, here, here is where I'm lost for words now. He said, not even if one raised from the dead, they will repent. I'm lost for words right here. So Jesus was referring to himself. He said, not even I, Christ, come and say to them, though I raise from the dead, they will not believe. Today in the church of God and worldwide, when the gospel is being preached about the kingdom of God, about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there will be many who do not believe the word of God. And even in the blessed church of God, many of us have a gospel, but we do not believe. So the prophecy that Jesus spoke here, he said, not even one rest from the dead, they will repent. I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, men hearts have become so hard that even you tell them the truth. One came from the dead, even the Messiah himself, they did not believe. As I'm located in the United Kingdom, in the Caribbean, when you evangelize, sometimes you evangelize to people who are already Christians, who have the background of a Christian or Christian background, preferably. But in the United Kingdom, believe it or not, I went to evangelize on the streets. And if I met 10 people, eight out of the 10 says to me, I do not believe in God. You see, most persons right now have become atheists. They do not believe in God, much less for the death of his son. So where I'm heading with you tonight, that the man Abraham, he was the father of many nations. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So we were grafted into Abraham's blessing by faith. So tonight for us to receive of the blessing, we need to move by faith. I'm heading somewhere with you tonight. But the man Lazarus, he was not looking to the tangible things, but he was looking for the bread. Though he was eating the crumbs, but his desire was to eat bread one day. And Jesus is that bread of life. I'm saying to the church, we have settled to eat crumbs that fall from the rich man table and that is why we give our entire life to the things of this world because we settle from the crumbs but i'm saying tonight you no longer have to eat the crumbs because the bread of life is available tonight you see tonight beloved brethren you don't have to have a desire to eat the crumbs i said the bread of life is available which is jesus is available to us tonight by faith. I'm, I'm, I'm slowing down with you now. So Lazarus, he was in Abraham's bosom, but he was not in torment. It is saying to me, at the returning of Jesus, those that live godly with Christ Jesus, those that walk with him, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says, and according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, likewise, it says, the Lord shall come with a trump, with the voice of an archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Watch this now. And it says, they which are alive and remain shall 
caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And when we meet the Lord in the air, those who are in the grave, the grave will not be able to hold your body down because you are rising up to everlasting life. You are, you are rising up with a new body where death has no power over your body. But I'm saying those who do not rise in the first resurrection after the thousand year reign, there is a judgment. There is a place they call the lake of fire. It is a place of torment. Ah, chains of the living God. We must make it our utmost breath to make it into God's kingdom. The rich man enjoy all the, the things of this life, but he never made it into the kingdom. He never made it into a place of peace, but his place was a place of torment. I'm saying to the believers tonight, if we don't make it right, we will end up in a place of torment. This is the message Jesus wanted to give the scribes and the Pharisees. This is the message Jesus wanted to show the people, no matter how you live in this lifetime, what matters is your soul with him tonight. I remember there was a rich man in St. Lucia. He was a politician. And this man was a brilliant politician, friends and family of God tonight. He was a brilliant politician. And this man did so much. They call him George Odlam, brilliant politician. When George Odlam was about to die, he got a rude awakening. He made this statement. He said, in my lifetime, I thought it was all about politics. But when he was dying, he said it's all about Christ, mighty God of Daniel. Tonight, my spirit is crying out to someone. You have been living your life on the edge. You have been living your life like the rich man. You are enjoying the amenities of this life. You are enjoying your wealth. You are enjoying your health care. You are enjoying going to the supermarket and you can spend a dollar. But tonight, I want you to know uh, there is a day that is coming. Uh, I'm lost for words for that day. My vocabulary cannot describe that day that is coming. That day that is coming, friends of God. Um, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears uh, have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men uh, what God has gone to prepare. I said the mouth cannot explain tonight what God has going to explain for a saints, but he gave us a glimpse of it tonight. The man Lazarus, though he was poor, though he was a beggar, but he made it into a better place. Tonight, what's about you? I watched this pathway. I watched folks. Watch each other as dirt, as nothing. What is even sad? Even folks in church, they view each other as nothing. We look down on each other. Brothers and sisters, I've never seen someone gone to the grave with their job. Hello, somebody. I've never seen somebody gone to the grave with their riches. You see, naked you came into this world and naked you shall return. You see, brothers and sisters, what matters now is the way we live our life to please God. You see, Jesus, according to Romans chapter 15, he did not please himself, but he pleased the Father. And tonight, our desire is to please God Almighty. Don't be like the rich man um, who enjoy the pleasures of this world. Uh, and the Bible says, what shall it profit a man uh, to gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? The rich man he enjoyed the pleasures. He enjoyed the wealth. He enjoyed everything. And his soul was lost. Let me bring it home with you tonight. Brothers and sisters, Sometimes I sit back and I think about where God have gone to prepare. I'm lost for words for it. Because what God have gone to prepare, the Bible says we shall be walking on the streets of gold. 
where God have gone to prepare the prayer brethren. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more pain. There will be no more deaths. There will be no more bills. But where God have gone to prepare, the, listen, friends and family of God, is a place of rejoicing. The Bible says there will be no need for the moon or the sun. Amen. For God himself shall be the light in that place. There will be an ever rejoicing. We shall be eating from the tree of life that bears 12 manna fruit in every season. Tell me tonight, who would you want to be like? The rich man? In a place of torment? Or you want to be a beggar now? <laughs> and enjoy what is to come. Who would you like to be like? And I can hear somebody's spirit crying out. Does that mean we have to be poor? Christ never promised you stick, chicken, and all sorts. He said your bread and water is sure. Remember one day I was at home in the United Kingdom. How many of you know tonight when you only remain $20 and you have to juggle it as into what to buy? And here am I at home with my wife and the three kids thinking, what should I do? My wife says to me, let us go to the shop to buy a little groceries. And that's all we remain, beloved brethren. I want you to get by fifth tonight. How many husbands tonight, if you are a husband tonight, and you know for a fact that you are ready to go to the shop, and you know how children are, they like to say, Daddy, I want this, and Mommy, I want that. And, and you are so nervous to go to the shop because you know the amount you have, that you are not able to afford what you need to survive, but it's just the basic tonight. How many of us know this tonight? The preacher is telling you, I know what it is. And while my wife is telling me, let us go, it's time to go. Beloved brethren, I'm just moving all about in the house, putting my shoe, taking off my shoe, because I'm so nervous. I went upstairs and I knelt by the bed. I said, God, you said, you shall supply all of my needs according to your riches in glory. Tonight, I'm teaching you about the faith of Lazarus. You know what faith Lazarus had? Lazarus had the faith that when he went, he must get crumbs from the rich man's table. Did you, did you miss that here? Lazarus had the faith, <laughs> my God, that even his desire was to eat the crumbs. He had the faith that when I go, I must get crumbs. And I say, Lord, you are God. Beloved brethren, I heard a banging on the door. Hallelujah. I heard a banging on the door. I did not speak to any brother or sister in the church. But as I heard the banging on the door, I went to look outside and here is a brother. He, he, he reversed his car in the driveway. And as he reversed the car in the driveway, beloved brethren, he came and he knocked on the door. And as he knocked on the door, he says, I have come to see you. And beloved brethren, when he opened up the door of the car, there was groceries all about in the car. Are you hearing me tonight, somebody? I'm talking about the faith of God tonight. And I was lost for all. Words. While I was praying on my knees, God already had somebody doing the shopping. You don't understand me tonight. I said, while I was praying, God had somebody 
see on the way doing the shopping while you are worrying tonight friends and family of god god have already made a way and this way have been lost for words i'm saying tonight the beggar lazarus he makes sure that when i go at the rich man's table i will get my crumbs this was his desire whatever the desire of your heart is tonight you will find it friends God. when we opened that door there was just groceries all about i was so excited is the more i remove groceries you see me alone could not carry the groceries to put in the house you see the, the man had to help me the brother had to help me to carry the groceries and the more i remove is the more hello somebody the more i remove is the more is the more i said mighty god i know you work fast but not fast like this and i glorify god of heaven i was Lots for work. Let me tell you something tonight. I had so much groceries. Uh, even when uh, one time we were sending a barrel home back to St. Lucia, even some of the things I receive, uh, I could have put in the barrel to send back. Oh, hello, my God. I could have listened. I was overflowing in the blessings of God because I had a faith like Lazarus. He had a desire. What is your desire tonight? What is your desire tonight? I remember another time I went to the island of St. Croix. And when I went to the island of St. Croix, beloved brethren, I only had money for the package. So if the package was costing 40 pounds, I only, or 40 US preferably, I only had 40 US for the package and i was juggling and struggling whether i should pay the package or not go to anything they have been in the tour and everything and have the 40 pounds to get something for myself but i'm saying brothers and sisters i had that 40 pounds and i said god what is it going on i end up just paying the 40 pounds i got my money right back the sister said listen someone has already paid your package. Oh my God. I was lost for words. It gets better now. While I was in St. Croix, my daughter was getting ready to go back to school. It was school time. And I wanted to buy some school stuff for my daughter. And as we were heading to the shop, I believe the name of the shop is K-Max. Watch this now. And while we were heading to K-Max, there was a few brothers who was there. I did not tell anybody what was in my heart. But I prayed to God Almighty. You see, most of the times we love to complain and complain and murmur and say, Lord, why I'm not getting this? Lord, why I'm not getting that? But you need to have a desire to pray tonight. Hallelujah. You need to have a desire to pray you need to have a desire like lazarus have a desire have a desire tonight and that desire you have tonight is to eat that bread and that bread is jesus and when i went the brother went to the cash machine and he took some money from the cash machine and he just came and he placed it in my hands listen to me brothers and sisters when he placed it in my hands i began to glorify him the name of god i said lord watch this i did not tell nobody my business but you know what? You work on express time because I had a desire. Watch this, brothers and sisters. It gets even better. When I went inside of TK Maxx and I started to shop, when I reached by the cash point, the brother said, don't worry. I got this. And he swiped his card. I said, wow. Loss. For words. Why was I lost for words? I had a desire like Lazarus. A desire to eat crumbs. But Jesus was saying, you need to have a greater desire. Not just for crumbs, but for the bread of life which is me. Do you desire Jesus tonight? The rich man had a desire for his riches. But Lazarus the poor man had a desire to eat crumbs 
from the rich man's table. That was his faith. Who is your rich man tonight? God Almighty. He said, cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to him tonight. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. All you need tonight is a desire. What is your desire tonight? A songwriter said, this is my desire to honor you. And the part I love in that song, it says, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have thy way in me. Tonight, my desire is to make it into God's kingdom. Lazarus in this story taught me something. Though I cannot afford the medical insurance, though I cannot afford the car I may need, but your bread and water is sure. Though you may not be able to afford the house that you saw, that you have to pay rent all your life, but your bread and water is sure. There is a city that is coming. John described it as a bride, a dawn for her husband, loss for words. One of these days, I have a testimony to give you about faith. And your desire even deeper. Reverend, tonight this story has so much in it. We can learn from. It's just a surface tonight. But what is your desire tonight? Let me end with you here now. And he said unto him, If they had not Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. This is where the power lies. The resurrection of Yahshua. Do you believe it tonight? I want to close with by telling you tonight, beloved brethren. As a young man in ministry... It is tough sometimes. It is hard. There are days I feel like throwing the towel. There are days I said I've had enough. But there is what you call a desire. It's not my desire to throw in the towel. But once you have a desire, even though the dogs was licking the sores of the poor man Lazarus, he had the desire to maintain eating the crumbs. You have that bread. Maintain eating the bread in spite of your surroundings, in spite of persons don't like you, in spite you go through rejection, in spite you go through different crises in your life, but have the desire to always eat at the master's Amen. feet. Christ says to, to, to Mary, and Martha, she have chosen to serve the tables. Most of us are so busy doing church stuff, but Martha have chose the best to be at the master's feet. Tonight, where do you choose to be? Where do you desire to be tonight? Is it at the master's feet? Or you are so busy preaching, so busy teaching, so busy moderating, so busy singing, so busy doing everything in church. 
But guess what? Your desire is not to be at the master's feet. But only those who have the desire will make it into that place of peace where Lazarus was because of desire. Brethren, may God bless you and may God keep you. And may you have the desire to maintain your faith in God Almighty. Have a blessed evening and thank you very much for your listening air in Yasha's name.